Hello, my name is Adrien Louchet. I am the product manager for the Simulation Tool VPI Transmission Maker. And today I would like to introduce some unique features of VPI Transmission Maker supporting the design of next generation high speed transceivers. As you know, digital coherent technology has reshaped the optical industry and enabled the deployment of 100G transmission on the legacy fiber plant. This was achieved by combining spectrally efficient modulation formats, such as DPQPSK, together with robust digital equalization schemes. Next generation 400G and terabit transceivers will rely on this technology, as well as on photonic integration, in order to address the continuous demand for more bandwidth and the need to reduce the system cost and footprint. Today, I will discuss the design of a particular 400G transceiver based on a dual carrier scheme. I will also investigate the performance of a 400G channel co-propagating with 100G channel over 1000 km. Before we start, I would like to give a brief overview of the VPI transmission maker's interface. Schematics are locating in the middle of the workspace. On the left, we have the module library, some demo applications, and the user libraries. Module can be drag and dropped this way in the schematic. Above the schematic, you can see some favorite modules. And on the top, we have simulation control options, macros, as well as different kinds of tools. We can use the uh, quick find functionality in order to look for a particular demo or setup. Here, for instance, I can find different setups and modules related to OFDM. Let's now have a look at the following setup. It illustrates the upgrade of a 100G WDM system with a 400G channel. On the transmitter side, you can see 1000G channel based on the DPQPSK modulation format and a 400G channel. Channels are multiplexed and propagate over a non-dispersion managed link. For sake of simplicity, only the 400G receiver has been represented in the schematic. We will now have a look inside the 400G transmitter galaxy. This transmitter includes a comp generator that produces two optical carriers and two DP16 QAM transmitters. Of course, the COM generator could be replaced by two CW laser for a dual carrier scheme. But for a terabit transceiver, including four or five subbands, the COM generator would be advantageous. Bit-to-symbol mapping is achieved using the Mapper IQ module. This module supports different kinds of constellations, such as MQAM, MPSK, differential MPSK, circular QAM, as well as arbitrary IQ constellation where the bit to symbol mapping can be specified in a text file. The following module is a TX40 module. It includes digital pulse shaping, DAX, and a dual polarization IQ modulator. The pulse shaping is achieved using square root raised cosine FIR filters with a roll-off of 0.1. The spectrum of the resulting signal is displayed here, for example. In this case, the channel spacing is set to 32 GHz and the laser presents a line width of 200 kHz. Let's go back to the main schematic. We will now run the setup for 12 loops. The input power for the 100G channel is set to minus 1 dBm, while the power of the 400G channel is varied between minus 3 and 5 dBm. 20,000 symbols per channel are simulated. Let's have a look at the modeling of the transmission line while the simulation is running. The transmission line includes 12 non-dispersion managed pens. Each pen comprises 80 km of standard signal mode fiber and an EDFA that compensates for the fiber loss. In this example, the noise feature and the gain of the EDFA are assumed constant over the wavelengths but this wavelength dependency could be specified via a text file. Channel propagation in the fiber is modeled using the Manakoff equation, which accounts for the stochastic nature of the fiber beaver fringes. 
This means that effects such as cross-polarization modulation or the polarization dependency of Raman-induced power transfer can be modeled. Note that the simulation time can be drastically reduced by taking advantage of consumer GPUs. For this, the option must be activated in the Preferences menu. Besides GPU-assisted computation, the simulation engine can take advantage of multi-core architectures. For this, we should enable the multi-threading options. Note that in this specific case, using GPU computation will speed up the simulation by a factor of 50. Let's now have a look at the spectrum of the transmitted signal. You can easily distinguish between the spectrum of the 400G channel and the 100G channels. As you can see, the crosstop between the sub-carriers or between the 400G channel and its 100G neighbors will depend on the carrier spacing as well as on the Nyquist pulse shaping. Let's now have a look at the spectrum after 1000 km. You can observe the noise floor. In this case, the OSNR of the 100G channel is around 23 dB. Let's go back to the main schematic and have a look at the receiver. The optical front end consists of a polarization diversity current receiver followed by four ADCs. Realistic component limitation, such as phase imbalance or insertion loss imbalance of the 90 grade hybrid, can be modeled. The ADCs are characterized by their speed, bandwidth, and their resolution. In addition, realistic ADCs limitations, such as random jitter, gain error, or nonlinearities, can be modeled. In the present case, the ADCs have 70 giga sample speed, 30 GHz bandwidth, and a resolution of 8 bits. The local oscillator presents a frequency offset of 100 MHz compared to the transmitter laser. It also presents a line width of 200 kHz. Let's have a look inside the DSP unit. Digital signal processing is carried out using a DSP libraries that have been developed by Fraunhofer HHI and which is available as a toolkit to VPI Transmission Maker. It includes state-of-the-art algorithm for channel estimation and equalization, carrier phase and frequency recovery, and this for a large range of modulation formats. In a particular case, following DSP steps are required. First, digital resampling, in order to resample a signal from 70 to 84 giga samples in order to achieve four samples per symbol. It is followed by frequency domain CD compensation. After this, a frequency shift is required in order to recover the subcarrier into the baseband. Low pass filtering, carrier frequency and phase recovery, as well as adaptive time domain equalization, are performed separately for the two subbands. Their X and Y tributaries are retimed and passed to the PR4D module. This module performs symbol to bit timapping and computes metrics such as BR symbol error rate or error vector magnitude. In addition, it can compute the log likelihood ratio of the received bits, a metric which is necessary for soft decision FEC. We'll now have a look at the simulation results. These are the received constellation of the two sub-carriers. This constellation can be displayed for different input powers. For instance, here 2 dBm or 5 dBm. In addition, metrics such as error probability or error vector magnitude can be computed. These metrics can be also computed symbol-wise. For instance, here we have the error probability or the occurrence probability for symbol number 9 and we can compare this with the ones of symbol number 13. This graph shows the bit error rate of the 400G channel after 1000 km versus its input power. As you can see, the optimal input power is around 2 dBm. Here, the BR is well below the FEC threshold. To conclude, we have demonstrated the feasibility to upgrade a 100G WDM system with a 400G channel. We have reviewed the design of the 400G transmitter and receiver. Of course, there are still open design issues and trade-offs to be addressed. For instance, 70GB sample ADC are not commercially available right now 
and there may be better alternatives for the modulation of the subcarriers. Nevertheless, this simple example shows the feasibility of 400G transmission using today's technologies. If you have questions regarding this presentation, please contact support at vpiphotonics.com. If you have interest in using our software or if you would like to discuss some specific design issues with our experts, please contact sales at vpiphotonics.com. Thank you very much for your attention.